All right, let's get started. Um, so yesterday, during let me get this straightened out so you're not crooked. During um, my weekly art club with my uh, friends, the girls and I made some. So I thought, eh, I've got a bunch of these. <clears throat> excuse me, old papers. Well, they're not that old, but they're. I got a bunch of scraps here little bits and pieces. And then I've got these uh, gel plate, gel printing plates um, that I did um, about a thousand years ago. So I thought, well, this is the perfect time to create some more based on these, um, using these uh, papers that I've already got in my stash. So I might as well use them up. So yeah, the girls and I made them yesterday. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm recovering from the flu, so I'm very, uh, <clears throat> so yeah, so we made them yesterday, we worked on them yesterday, and, um, you know, we have, like, this boatload of just, like, all this kind of stuff, and then, like, little, so here's, like, my folder of more scraps, I mean, I have a ton of different, like, scraps, so I kind of like doing these and then what I'm planning is perhaps leaving these around as like little random acts of kindness, which is kind of something I've been wanting to do for a while so that I can um, leave them around my little town, my little live in New England and I don't know. I just, I think it's kind of a nice little, nice little thing to do to, you know, maybe bring a smile to somebody's day. So I thought if I make a bunch of these <clears throat> and give them out. So that's, that's my thought process. That's what I'm going with. I'm going to put in some different found catalog. Um, you know, cute little, I should get my scissors out. Then I can glue down and I'm going to need, where the heck, I just need like a, get a shitty little scrap piece of paper to glue on. Let's see, do I have one down here? <clears throat> I don't like using stuff. Um, well, I guess I could just clean up my glass thing. Whatever, right? So yeah, so this is what, I thought this would be kind of a fun little thing to work on and do a live on. So yeah, so we worked on these yesterday and we had a nice time chit-chatting and visiting with each other. We haven't seen each other since, um, geez, before, I don't even know, maybe Thanksgiving time because everybody's been sick and then our house had COVID and yeah, it was kind of, it's kind of been a, a nightmare with <clears throat> everybody being sick. And then here I am, I'm like, I never get sick. I'm always healthy. I take my vitamin C. Well, guess who ended up getting it? Like worse than anybody else in the house. It was awful. <laughs> Holy shnikes. I was like, I kept saying I was like a dead body. And my poor husband had to completely run the whole family while I was dead to the world, lying in bed for days. And it's funny because like my kids, my oldest daughter had, she got COVID. Nobody else got it. She stayed in a room and it was fine. We managed. And then um, my middle kid called, you know, got the call from school saying she's not feeling good. So I go to pick her up. It's like a friggin' drive through because so many kids are sick and the nurse is like, Oh yeah, I've got like 30% of the kids in the school are <clears throat> out sick with 
the flu, pneumonia. I mean, just a complete nightmare. So she comes home sick. And then my little guy, and I say little loosely because he's 12, so he's not really little, but he ends up coming home sick from school like the next day. And then he's like a dead body. So yeah, I mean, it went all the way through the house and then my poor husband gets it and he's lying here crying in irritation and agony over. Um, he gets like, when he gets sick, he always seems to really get sick. And he, we had to like leave him at home to when we were going and doing like the softball stuff and <clears throat> all the stuff for the, you know, the kids. And so he missed out on a lot of stuff. Poor guy, I felt bad for him. But he ended up getting like, you know, terrible fever and chills and yeah, blah, blah, blah. So yeah, he, uh, I think he always seems to get it the worst of everybody. It, it just seems to be. That's what goes on. But now he's on the mend. And then I get it. And whoo, brutal. So yeah, I'm just slapping pictures, pictures, papers down. And I'm not, I don't have a plan. I'm on the non-plan plan. I'm just kind of putting things down and seeing, seeing what works, you know, I'm not, um, I've got this whole little bucket of weird little things like these are from paints, like they wrapped watercolor paints in. So I thought they were kind of neat to use as like, you know, stickers or, so I'm just kind of putting them down. But yeah, so I was thinking beginning of the year, you know, it's for Christmas and New Year's and all that go by. And I'm like, you know, I, I really would like to do something that is um, kind of random act of kindness sort of a thing. Oh, my God. Do you hear my, my stupid watch keeps bing bonging and telling me that I have all these emails or not emails, but chats from the softball team that they just are seem like they're constantly talking about stuff. So if you're bing bong and that's all that is, it's not an emergency. Um, but anyway, <clears throat> so yeah, so I was thinking, I, I kind of want to get back into like several years ago when I first, like when I was a like, young stay at home mom and looking for, you know, things to, to do to keep me, you know, involved in art. I joined a couple of art groups on Facebook and it was fun. And we always did these little Happy Meal swaps and I loved them. They were so much fun. And some of them had prompts and some of them didn't. And they were, they weren't um, stressful, meaning, you know, you had to sign up for, you know, X amount of things or, you know, you just kind of, you know, did it when you had time and I loved them. And over time, the, the groups have kind of dissipated and, um, you know, we haven't, we haven't kept up with it or, you know, people have dropped out or, you know, whatever the case may be. So it got me thinking, you know, back then that was so, so fun to do and just go out to the mailbox and you have something that somebody made and I have a whole box of nice little things that people have made through the years. And I like to here and there go through them and, and see you know, to, or try to, you know, remember who made this or what this little mailing project was for. It's just fun to do. Like we did a um, postcard, you know, give a word of encouragement or, you know, that kind of thing. Like nothing, 
nothing stressful and fancy, but just, I don't know, something that's kind of fun to, to get in the mail and put a smile on your face. So that this is my thinking for the beginning of the year, January. Let's do some random acts of kindness. And like, you know, like I said before, these can go, whoops, in the, you know, library or general store, or, you know, supermarket, whatever. And they're not, um, you know, they don't take a ton of time to do, but you might just brighten somebody's day. So they have happy messaging too, which I think is important because sometimes, you know, people, you don't see what they're going through and they've got some shit storm of a life happening or, you know, somebody's dying or they're going through a divorce or, you know, I don't, I don't know. Some, some people have some pretty hair raising shit happening to them. So maybe this would bring them happiness for a fleeting minute. So that, that's my thought. And I was thinking, like last year, I taught myself how to crochet. And I thought it was like the greatest badass ever that I sat down and I taught myself how to crochet. And Because I've always wanted to make like um, granny squares, you know, those granny squares. I just always, oh, God, somebody calling. What is it? Stupid telemarker. Um... Where the hell was I? Oh, yeah, so granny squares. The, um, <clears throat> you know, granny squares, I always loved them. I always thought they were so cool and so pretty. And um, I, I just always was drawn to them. So I made this, like, I, know, I was futzing around on YouTube one day, and I saw this lady doing a tutorial on granny squares. So I watched it, and I'm like, well, son of a bitch, I can do that. So I bought myself, I went to like Michael's or Walmart or something. And I found she was using 100% cotton, which, you know, I don't know what I don't know. So I went and I got 100% cotton yarn and I sat down and boy, did I screw up royally here and there. But you know what? I finally taught myself how to friggin' crochet. And I was so excited about it. This is kind of like my thing now. Like I love crocheting at night. And I've made a bunch of different little like blankets and um, afghans. I made a bag. I did, um, what else have I done? I haven't, oh no, I actually did. I made um, sweater. And I don't mean a person sweater. I made a sweater for my little dogs. So I have a, I have an English bulldog, Mirabelle. And I have a pug, a little blonde fawn pug named Rosemary. You can probably hear her snoring in the background. She's laying on my bed. And um, I have a bunch of these. I have a bunch of um, sweaters from I made little little sweaters for my little babies. This is it's like a little house. <clears throat> I have like these funny little cut up things that I've got from like um, different things on Etsy and you know like this is from post office catalog it's just weird weird stuff i i do like i said i don't have a plan i'm not being super uh cautious about measuring stuff i, I really am not this isn't what i want to do so i'm just kind of putting things down and adding colors and designs 
And then that way I can go back and I've got like a, oh, let's see, where the heck is it? It's in here. I've got this big box of um, like photo holder thing. And like this has words. So I have all these little little words that I can put on negativity in life as it is. So I do, everything I do has positive meaning because life's too short to have negative stuff. There's too many other negative things going on in the world. So my art is always positive and colorful and happy. <clears throat> Let's see. I'm just layering stuff and layering stuff and layering stuff. I like that little house. It's really cute. But it's a little too... Well, I'll just glue half of it on. And then I'll cut the other half off and use it on something else. Um, I need my little bone folder. I'll trim that off once it's dry. <clears throat> um, and then, I, like, I've got these little bits that are like scraps from watercolors that I just kind of futz around with. and So maybe I'll do like a little. I should do some of these for Valentine's Day. That would be kind of a fun little addition. God, I went to the Dollar Tree this morning. And I had this vision in my head that I wanted to make my kids their Valentine treat boxes this year. So like almost like exploding boxes, you know, where you open them up and everything kind of falls out. So I had it in my mind that that's what I wanted to do for them. And where it's you know January, I figured I should probably do it sooner rather than later so that I had a decent choice of decorative valentine boxes like um those square boxes you know so you can put like a box in a box so i go over to the dollar tree i'm like oh they've got to have a million different cute little cardboard valentine themed boxes they didn't have one like they had plastic ones but i need cardboard ones because i'm going to cut it and make it so that they flap open and they didn't have one friggin decorative box i was like what the hell for valentine's day so i went into the um birthday department and luckily they seem to have some um some ones there that were cute they were like you know a red one a gold one you know kind of plain looking but i figured i could jazz it up if i wanted to but i ended up getting that because that way it's, um, you know, more along the lines of what I was looking for. But anyway, so I digress. So I'm at, you know, Dollar Tree. Like, we, we have a Dollar Tree around here that opened probably about, I don't know, five years ago or so. And, oh, I thought it was the most wonderful place ever. It was clean and new. and But throughout the years it's turned into a complete friggin' nightmare. Like it is so trashed and there's just shit all over the aisles and all over the, everywhere. And it just looks so unkempt. And you know, I used to love going there and now I can't motivate myself to go there because it's so, ugh. so I hemmed and hawed. I'm like, uh, 
what am I going to do? So I went to this other Dollar Tree that was in, um, it's like, it's like a highway right away. It's probably 20 minutes by the highway. And I, I've been in there like a couple times before, but not for, you know, like I'll run in and I'll grab something, you know, like a pack of gum or, you know, whatever the hell it is I'm looking for. So I don't spend a lot of time in there. Well, I went in there this morning because I was near the grocery store and I was like, all right, I'll go into that Dollar Tree over there. And oh my holy Jesus, it was the nicest freaking Dollar Tree that I've ever seen in my life. And I actually said to the lady who was probably like, you need to get out more, you stupid ass. Um, I was like, this is the nicest Dollar Tree. I love your Dollar Tree. It's just so nicely put together and blah, blah, blah. And she was probably like, you know what? Move it along, psychopath. Can you stop yammering and let the line move? But I was just so like, in love with what a nice little dollar tree. It wasn't even a little one. It was actually a pretty big one. But, yeah, I thought it was kind of, I was out of luck. But you know what? I didn't even care at that point because it was just such a nice nice shopping experience. I love a good shopping experience. Maybe I can use this for something else. It's kind of cute little so far. She's cute. But she needs something that background's a little too busy to have her stand out. So I was originally like I kept grabbing these out and putting these in here. As like little focal images. They're kind of neat because they're just scrappy and they're just fun. So, but I've already used like these, this house. Mm. Mm. <clears throat> what the hell was that? Use the pin that goes to my glue. <clears throat> There's another one. Oh, that's cute. Isn't that cute? That might be good for Valentine's. Maybe the next one I do will be a a Valentine theme one. I'll put maybe I'll start making a little pile on the side of Valentine-y looking. Here's a kitty one. And some pink papers and let's see. Oh he's cute. We're gonna use like a little bird. I'm gonna put him over here. Oops. watched this um, game show last night that was called um, The Floor and it's got Rob Lowe who still looks awesome still looks like Rob Lowe just a little bit of an older version which you know what I'll take it because hopefully I'll age that well but um, and it was like it had like a hundred people on the, this floor and they were all in like little squares and they would call somebody up and that person would be, um, go up against somebody else to um, answer questions about whatever their preferred subject is. So like there's this one guy, <clears throat> excuse me, that was, um, said he was a master of, slogans so like the the screen would have you know 
just do it. And he would have to say, he would go up against this other person and they would guess like Nike. And then they would have, have like, um, I'm loving it. And he would say, oh, you know, Wendy's. And I would go, ram, ram. no, okay. And then he would try. Yep. Okay. So at any rate, so we're watching it. And I'm like, I, I really liked it. I thought this was kind of neat because it's, you know, not like mindless or whatever. My, my little guy like shows like that before he goes to bed because it's not like it's kind of lighthearted and it's not, you know, video games or, you know, rootin' tootin' shows where they're, you know, super negative stuff happening, you know. So, so he likes to watch those. So I have to bring it up to him tonight. We, we started to tape it because I thought he would really like these to watch this. So, yeah, so I think we'll, uh, we'll turn that on with, with him tonight and see how he likes it. But I, uh, my other two kids, they, well, all three of my kids really, they love music and they've been around a lot of different music and they have a pretty eclectic taste in music. So we've also been watching, um, uh, name that tune. It's like the new one with, uh, what the heck is her name? Jane Krakowski. She's like been on Ally McBeal and yeah, you'd know if you saw her, right? So she's the host. And then she's got the co-host slash um, band leader. And it's the guy that was on American Idol back when um, Simon Cowell was on it. And it was like Paul Abdul, Simon Cowell, and Randy Jackson. So Randy Jackson is the like band dude. And I had read that he had lost a lot of weight, sort of a health scare. And so, you know, not exactly like the number one Randy Jackson follower. You know, I don't really pay too much attention to him. So kind of forgot he even existed, to be honest. So then I'm watching the show and, dude, this guy looks like he, it turns out he lost like 200 pounds, which good for him he wants to lead a healthier lifestyle, but he is unrecognizable. But so much so that he looks frail. And it made me sad. Like, I'm watching him like, like he just doesn't even look like what I remember Randy Jackson looking like. Like, it doesn't even look like him. And, <clears throat> you know, I, I don't know what I don't know, but he seems like he's had some sort of like a, maybe some kind of an accident or a stroke or something, because he, he doesn't talk that much. And when he does talk, it's like, it's like incoherent, like, he, like just yelling at the... <laughs> And like, whoa, whoa, like, and he's not like he's saying anything. I don't know. It just kind of bummed me out. I'm like, I, I wonder what happened to him. Like, did he suffer some kind of a, you know, stroke or, because I remember when my mother had a stroke, she, that's kind of how she spoke. Like she had broken speech and she would kind of be very animated and, you know, hoot and howl if she wanted to get a point across. And I don't know, it just kind of bummed me out. I'm like, dude, what happened to that guy? But then, then I think I'm also one of those people that I think people stay the same age forever and they don't age. So maybe I was expecting him to be the same exact guy that he was. I say, like, it you know, wasn't American Idol just on, but it was on, like, you know, 25 years ago. So, clearly, he's aged. So, I don't know, but <clears throat> it just kind of bummed me out. What happened to that dude? 
but it's a fun it's a fun show to watch and my kids are they get a kick out of the songs and um <laughs> they they know a lot of the tunes that they're playing which i find hilarious because they're teenagers and they they know songs from like the 50s and i love that it makes me happy it makes me think damn i raised you right that they can pick out songs from and he puts on the 40 station like what 12 year old boy listens to 40s music mine does and he knows all the songs like he loves the mills brothers and he loves all these like you know old tunes and it's just i, I think it's pretty great makes me happy makes me think i did a good job Hubby and I raised him to have a good taste, an eclectic taste in music. I'm going to use some of these little cardboard things to put in little um, words. And I just use some like cheesecloth there. Let's see what kind of words I have in here. Awesome. I'm just going to shut my, my heater. It's a little warm in here. My little room here that I work in, it's, it's very cozy. It's very small. It's probably like a I don't even know, eight by eight little, almost like a glorified closet, but it's got a nice little window in it. And I love this little room. I've got my sewing machine in here and my computer. And it's funny because I got like a little tiny space heater over in the corner over there that I turn on. And then I've got my sweatshirt on. And all of a sudden I'll be like super hot. And I'll be like, oh, I can't, oh. And then, like, 10 minutes later, I'll be freezing. So if I keep going back and forth, you know why. So that says awesome. This one says she believed she could. So, but I'm thinking this might go kind of cute with um, my little girl. I think I might put yeah, zines have been kind of been kind of the thing the last couple of days in my life. I just love doing them. What is this from an old calendar? I don't know if you can even hear Rosemary, but she's laying over there and she's laying on my bed snoring. She's the best little friend. We are a pug family in this house. We've had pugs for about 20 years now, and um, there's just nothing like it. <clears throat> and when uh, I was at my middle daughter, she was she plays softball, and I was at her game a couple weeks ago, and I was talking to this lady. And, her daughter plays with my daughter and they're both catchers and she's this super nice lady. We're chit-chatting and um, she's got a, uh, a last name of somebody that I used to work with. So, you know, it just kind of brought him to my, my mind. I was like, Hey, do you, 
or no, how did I put it? I said, um, oh, I know somebody with that last name. And I used to work with him and his name is blah, blah, blah. And she said, oh my God, that's my brother-in-law. Huh, small world. So funny. So anyway, going back <clears throat> to, to pugs, um, this particular guy um, gave me a pug. He had a, he had this little black pug that his little boy was deathly allergic to. And, um, he was like, you know, I know that you have pugs and would you consider, you know, giving, giving her a home and, you know, twist my arm. Right. So he, I adopt this pug and <clears throat> I'm sure the kids were just dead. Some of these. This is called a wood lily. It's pretty. We actually. It's like origami paper or something, but it kind of matches. I'll do a little frame on that. What time is it? 2.40. I got a couple more minutes and then I gotta go start getting ready for my little kids to come home from school. I'm gonna make them a little treat. So I'm gonna head out in a minute so they can go do that before they get home. It is 2.42 and they get out at 2.40 so they should be getting on the bus right about now. And then when they get home in about 20 minutes, that's when my day starts and I get to hear all about the shenanigans of what went on and who did what. I love it when they come home. I'm the dork mom that gets excited when they come in the door so I can hear all about their day. <clears throat> and they're happy little things. So it's usually a, a lot of positive reports, which is what what you want. Mm, let's see, this is like there's like two little two more little stamps that I've got. But it doesn't really go anywhere. And I don't want to cover this up because I think that's pretty. Maybe I'll just cut the square and put it on the front. Like a, it looks almost like a um, like a pinata or something. It was on a stamp in one of the stamp books. <clears throat> See, I got so I got a word, 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 word. Maybe one more word back here, and then a little glue. Mm. 
What about promise? It's a nice word. Cute. Maybe I will put my pin back into my glue, cover up my glue so that it doesn't dry out. Do a little doodles. doodles and drawings to some of the stuff that I do so it just gives it a little other layer of something fun to look at and I like outlining some of my pictures and images so that it stands out against the background because sometimes the backgrounds can get pretty busy when you do like these gel printing I'm just even not even making it a fancy straight edge, just a scratchy kind of a doodly edge just kind of pops it. Cellophane up with a little tag or send it in the mail to a friend that says, you know, Happy New Year or something to put a smile on your face. I just, I miss doing stuff like this for my, my art girlfriends. So I'm thinking I might reconnect with them and send these to some of my favorites that are on my people who I used to send things to all the time that we've kind of not fallen out of touch, but, you know, life gets in the way and there's, you know, change of jobs, moving, loss of a son, kid going to college, you know, it's all that kind of life stuff gets in the way. And then by, then you realize, oh my God, I haven't talked to this person in five years. And I'm just kind of adding little stripes for like a continual element, you know, into spots that don't have anything on them. There. Gonna go really crazy and take like my um, rubber stamps and stuff out, but I'm not gonna stress myself out with too many choices because then I'll just 
it'll just confuse the issue. down here. <clears throat> Maybe some thick, thicken up some lines here and there. This guy I think I want to do a little something for. And then Promise, we need promise to stand out because it's a nice word. There. I should get some glitter and glitter the wings. I don't think I have any. No. Sugar. Oh, well. Next time I will put some some on there. I think, this, I think I'll put a little something up here too. <clears throat> I see all these little spots where I could put a little doodle or a little drawing. And see these are just um, reinforcements like those. I don't know what the hell I did with it. Here they are. Like these, um, you put them on like three hole punch papers and all I did was grab them and I just kind of scribbled over them with some markers and some glitter glue. And then I've got a little embellishment to add to my, my artwork. So that's a nice, easy addition. And cheap because you can get them like at the Dollar Tree or Walmart and there's you know, it's like two bucks for 800 of them. So you can use them and do all different colors. And you probably, I would use like watercolor, but I would use like marker or, you know, some sort of gel pens. You can make all different color combinations. Yeah, that's cute. It's like a little flower. Isn't that kind of cute? Let's see. Um, maybe this cheesecloth gets kind of all over the place. <laughs> uh, maybe over here I'll do a little. I always say less is more, but when I do things like this, I think more is more. And I just love adding layers of things so that people, when they look at it, they go, oh, I didn't notice that before. Or that's an interesting little piece. I think that came out pretty cute. And I used up a fair amount of scraps, so that's kind of nice to have that. So I'm going to do a couple more of these, maybe tonight, or maybe I'll jump on tomorrow and do a couple more, so that um, if you want to do them together, uh, feel free to hop on. I'll probably come on in the morning. Um, so I'll uh, I'll jump on and I'll do a couple more of these because I've got 
Let's spread it a little bit. Let's see what we got here for our stash. So many pieces of paper. See, I've got all these like jelly prints of, and they're just on computer paper. Nothing super, um, it's not flimsy, but it's not super tough to, to fold. So I'll probably pick one that I don't necessarily, I'm not in love with the background, but I'll, I'll just have one quick Well, <clears throat> we're sitting here and then I'll have it started. So when I fold it, I fold it in half like this. And if you've got a bone folder, just use the bone folder to get a nice crease. And then fold it in half again, matching the edges as best as you can. But, you know, where this is a handmade, homemade thing, it doesn't have to be uber perfect. And then fold it in half again. Now I've got this nice little folded piece. And then I'm going to just trim from this fold down to this fold. And what I mean by trim is I'm just going to take the tiniest sliver off the top. Like it's barely even right. See how thin that is? Look at how little skinny, skinny. Oops, and I'm going to go right to that fold so that it's got, see how it's like this now? So then I'm going to take this, it's like a, the valley fold, and push that out a little bit. So now it's like this. And then I'm going to smush it together and then fold it in half again. So now I have my little booklet. And then, like with this one, folds flat. And by folds flat, I mean if you want to send this in the mail as just like a plain piece of paper so it's flat, and then whoever gets it can build it, you know, it's it's cheap enough because it fits in a nice thin envelope. But I like to trim off my sides and you know, that way I, I don't have like these open, open sides. So that's just, it's personal preference. And a lot of people make these zines that they can photocopy site and um, it'll be on YouTube and 